welcome back, dear viewers. Now, I have got 20 of the Nebnet Throbwell kits finished and stored on the hanging shelf of stock. I've also got the extension tidied because we had a barbecue, um, which turned into a little bit of a dance and the disco inferno. So I needed to tidy all that up and that's great because I gave me an incentive to get the Nebnet Throbwell Throb well kits finished really quickly. Now that's done, on to the excitement that is a ukulele playing machine. Obviously, I can't play a ukulele. Why would I pick an instrument I can play? Oh, ignorance is bliss. That's my mantra. That's what I'm going to stick with. So we've got that. Now, if you remember back to a couple of videos ago, when I was on holiday, I needed a project to keep the old grey matter going whilst sitting on the beach, and decided that I'd always wanted to make some sort of steampunk music machine. Always been fascinated by them. When I was young, like the old steam fairground organs, beautiful, loved the complexity and the sound and everything. So I started doing lots of sketches and very quickly remembered my children were at one point interested in the ukulele. So we had two of them. And rather than doing the simple part of it first, we, well, I don't think anything's simple about this. I reckon, in fact, having given this some thought whilst walking the dog, that this is probably the most complicated thing I've ever tried to design. What started off as a nice little holiday project. Hmm. So I leaving, I'm not worrying about plucking the strings yet, because some kind viewers, loads, thank you so much for all the useful comments, the valuable suggestions and everything. Um, and a couple of people mentioned the hurdy-gurdy. I didn't even know they existed, vaguely remember the name, but they have a disc with um, horse hair or something around it, with rose in on it, and anyway, I'm getting sidetracked, but there are several ways of plucking and um, vibrating the strings, so I'm not worried about that yet. What I'm worried about, sleepless nights and all that, is the frets. The simplest one, or the final one I came up with, the mechanism, was that which has got four titchy little motors, little bits that flip round, and then the whole thing is going to be pushed up and down, and you can see that there's four little fingers. Um, hopefully this is focusing, or I might just be watching my beard, I don't know. Um, it pushes up and down, and then you get the little fingers that push against the strings. That means, though, because there are 12, that's 12 of your very best fret positions, and there are four strings, 48 or, well, 48, 12 lots of these, 48 little motors. I mean, it's just, as people started pointing out, it's absolutely ridiculous. A bag has arrived. Much better, I can hide again. What I hope is, it's the grown-up servo motors. Let's have a look. Well, it's from Pimroni, which is a really good shop for buying sort of computerized kit stuff and things. And, well, there we are, Pimroni. And it actually stands for um, Pirate Monkey Ronin Ninja. Isn't that funny? Clever, clever name. Um, in the past, I've only ever used these motors, which are fabulous things. Um, but they're they're very geared down. They're about two thousand, over two thousand uh, pulses or steps per revolution. So very slow. And I realised that if I want my melodies, music to have any sort of tempo at all, these were not going to do because I think it's about 4 RPM, if that, which means that if you were going to wipe something up and down here, it would take ages. You want to do it really quickly. So I've ordered some grown up stepper motors, the first time that I've ever used them. I'm very excited. They're the ones, as you know, if you've watched the last video or something, Nema. I thought Nema was a make of motor, what an idiot. Nema is not a make of motor, it's a, the, and I'll put it on the screen like I did last time because I can't remember, it's all sort of standards, electrical standards for motors and stuff. Now I've bought some little interfaces for the stepper motors because they draw quite a lot of current and this will, amazing little things, they're so small, everything's so small these days, it's incredible. Connect them to the Arduino and then the Arduino can control the uh, stepper motors, so that's good, doing all the current switching, because I think there is an amp per um, coil. That's pretty. What's in there? Oh, 
kind of them. Ahoy! Ten years. Excellent. Pimeroni.com. I can recommend them. No affiliation, as always. And I just realised that I've got the microphones the wrong side, so you're hearing all the scrunching. I will try and keep it to a minimum. Look. Look, look, look. This is so exciting. I'm sure it's not exciting for lots of people. In fact, anyone who's used one of these stepper motors before, but I haven't. And these are the sort of stepper motors, no gears on them, very accurate, very, very fast. I was reading somewhere they can go up to something like, oh, 200 RPM, possibly more than that. But we'll find out, dear friends, soon. First thing to do is, and this sort I was going to say, is the sort that you used on 3D printers, laser cutters, all that sort of thing. Um, Oh, I can't wait. It's so exciting. I'm going to stop talking because the next thing I need to do is to wire this up to an Arduino through an interface and see what it does. I can't wait. Oh, that's so exciting. I'm just assembling the interface on the very board and I've hit a problem. I don't know what voltage these work off. The, oh, they've got a table at Pimeroni, they've got a table of all the different um, specifications. Nowhere does it mention voltage. Lots of these NEMA motors are 12 volts, but I've got no idea. I looked up one about this size, which is the NEMA 14, I think, and it said it was 2.5 volts, which seems very odd, very strange. So I can't get this actually running. I can get it wired up. And the second problem is another dreadful own brand Amazon absolutely awful moonfall great cast loads of effects all sorts of other bits and pieces but it is dreadful as always sadly obviously the budget was unlimited they could have they got Halle, Be Halle Berry in it I can't remember her name all sorts of other famous people the bloke off um, Game of Thrones, all sorts. Brilliant sets, all the rest of it. But it's obviously just been written by a committee who've decided, right, we like that about Interstellar. We like this music about from this one. We like the idea of that. We liked A uh, Day After Tomorrow, where there's a son or a child involved. And they cobble this whole thing together, which doesn't make any sense, really, at all. It is just it's oh it winds me up because there is no excuse as far as i'm concerned why with that sort of funding they can be so careless i suppose it's because they they don't care about producing a really fabulously creative uh, you know quite edgy sort of piece of work because that's risky because it might not pay off and no one might like it anymore so they just produce some namby pamby wishy washy thing that ticks all the boxes oh, it does my head in. The potential, I thought, well, that's exciting. A new space film, a bit of science fiction. Lovely. Keep me out of mischief while I'm doing some soldiering and things. I can't watch it anymore. I mean, the sun's been done, prosecuted for drug driving a car or something. And they're trying to save the world because the world's about to hit the earth and all sorts of things. And you've got this side story about some sun. Oh, it's, it doesn't make any sense. Anyway. Calm down, deep breaths, go to that lovely, quiet place of tranquility. How oh, lovely. I am going to get on and finish wiring this up. So my advice is, don't watch Moonfall. If you do want to watch Moonfall, because it's free on Amazon, if there is such a thing as being free, you have to pay every month, um, do let me know what you think. I think it's absolutely awful. Now, as well as finishing soldering all this together, I've got to find something else to watch. Ha! Amazon original or exclusive. Ridiculous, just a cobbled together pile of old rubbish. Glass of wine, dog taken for a walk, not in that order. And I've been reading up about all these sorts of things and what seems to happen, it all seems very vague with these stepper motors, but I read somewhere that as long as you don't exceed the maximum current, which is one amp for this, um, and luckily my power supply has got a current limiting thing on it. You can turn the voltage up to whatever's required. It all sounds a little bit strange and suspicious, but look at that. That was the problem. But I'm very pleased with that. That is now going at 200 RPM. It's a couple of days later and 
I'm just going to get on with this project. I'm absolutely sick. In effect, it's about a month since we got back from holiday with all the fabulous ideas for the ukulele playing thing. And I've done actually nothing really tangible to show for it. So I've decided to start making stuff today and just do it. Stop planning, stop worrying about it. Just get on. I mean, that's how steampunk machines, you know, it's a really nice way to design them without having very many clues at all about what they're going to be like long term. But just starting and then you make changes and add bits. And by the very nature of that process, you end up with something that looks very interesting and sort of victorian y if that's a word. Anyway, let me show you what I've been doing. So earlier I had worked out how to get that to control this. I have subsequently done more research and heard back from Pimeroni about voltages for these and sure enough you can use Ohm's law, they always the specifications give the current and the resistance it actually said at the end of one of these things I was reading, by a company that make these things, that you can on average multiply the operate the stated operating voltage by between 10 and 24 times. The important thing though, as I sort of surmised earlier, was not to exceed the, um, the specified current for the windings. So I have ordered five, rather than things like this, you can get um, step motor drivers, very small ones surprisingly so, with a current limiting um, variable resistor on. So you can just adjust that, so I can adjust that to an amp and feed it with say 12 volts and then it'll work as fast as it can. Although having said that, the faster they work, the more voltage you apply to them or whatever current voltage, um, the noisier they get. Um, so I may be able to turn it down, turn the current down or the voltage down to make it quieter because obviously if you've got four of these going surrounded this, surrounding this you could drown out all the musical sound completely but again I thought well let's think about sound dampening and deadening no just go on with it and we'll work it out as we go along so I've actually cut something out four pieces to support one of these because I am going to mount one there, one the other side and then for the two centre strings up near the top and then use the drive belt to wrap around them. So without further ado, this is so nice isn't it? Now all in all there's 10mm acrylic, the two end pieces are 5mm acrylic. I'm going to glue them together, I'm not going to spray it up to start with, just see how well it all fits together and I'll get back to you. Well, that's not too shabby, is it? Engravings and all. Slots at the bottom to screw it down to the base. Talking of bases, I didn't, the only bit of wood I had that would fit a ukulele on it was this bit of ply left over from something else. Obviously, that's no good because it's all warped and bendy. And I searched around for any other bits of wood that I may be able to use that are big enough. Nothing. So I decided in the end to go to b and Q. I I remember going to a supermarket on the Isle of Wight when we were on holiday. For the first time I'd been to a supermarket for two years or whatever since the beginning of the pandemic. And it was like, it was so exciting. I couldn't believe it. It was like a museum of food and groceries and other household goods. I was like a child in a sweet shop or whatever the expression is. Just going around looking at all the bright colours and all the exciting products. It was amazing. So I thought, well, B&Q, not so bad. I need the wood. I've got to stop prevaricating so there's not time to order it from Woodyard or whatever else and get it cut. Let's just go to B&Q. Oh, should have known. The pipe music, the whole ambiance should be really exciting, full of loads of exciting stuff. No, just really crappy, low quality products. Everything is there, especially the own brand. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, I can't remember, but it's all just rubbish, including the wood. So, you know, you go over to the all the wood, like pieces of plywood and stuff. Plywood's ideal, especially the thick things and stuff, because it's got the rigidity to support all the machine and the instrument and everything else without warping or anything. I wish I'd had a camera, although I'm not allowed to take photos inside shops like that. Not surprisingly, every piece of ply 
and all the wood was warped. Every single bit. Oh, just saw taking down each individual piece of ply and butting up against the edge of something else, assuming that was square, and then seeing it all twisting and warping right up to really thick of 18mm ply. How is that humanly possible? All those layers of wood, right and left, interspersed, the grains going different ways, glued together, pressed, this, that. How is it humanly possible to get something that thick warped? Unbelievable, but they managed it. So in the end, I went for the lesser of, not two evils, many evils, which was some ply. This was the least warped bit of ply, because I thought, well, with ply you can stain it, it looks nice, and it's got the rigid support, the structural support. But it's not, I can't use this, it's all rubbish. Right down to the fact that oh, I've turned it upside down, but there were huge lumps of it missing, and on the back, there's massive great gouges out of it. Oh, it's just ridiculous. And this was the straightest bit out of about um, 50 pieces. Also, I went for some of this um, board, I can't remember what it's called now. I'll put it on the screen, but it's lovely and you can, I love it. When I used to um, be head of department design technology, I used to get lots of jigs and things made out of it because it was, it looks fascinating. And you can see the wonder of recycling old furniture, pallets and all that because they chip it up and then glue it all back together again. Isn't that lovely. So a piece of that and this is actually, I was thrilled to find that is flat. So what I'm going to do I'm getting there. Use this, and again, with this invention, I'm just using what I've, well, not using what I've got, been to b and I'm dic letting things I find dictate details, that's more like it. So I'm um, just mark this, I'm gonna cut that out, glue that as a veneer, basically, onto the front of this, and then cut that to size. That'll give the rigidity, the um, ply, will make it look nice. And there we have the wood being glued, or sandwiched it, well it's on the table actually, and then the off cart and then another bit and then all the heavy things I can find. There would be better ways of doing it, but this will suffice. I've just come up with another fabulous idea, even though I say so myself. Along, whoop, along with the frets and the strumming I'm going to have four of those little stepper motors on the tuning things because that means that I'm going to go and look up how to tune stuff with a microphone and feedback, audible feedback and things on an Arduino, find out if it's even possible. But that would be amazing, so when you first switch it on it can then tune each of these and you could even add that to the way it plays music. How fascinating, it's all coming together, it is so exciting now. Thanks very much for watching. Next time, things are actually going to be happening. Well, things have started happening now, which I'm so thrilled about. I'm actually looking forward to tomorrow and starting to fix everything down. Don't know how yet, I'll work it out as I go along. Thanks again. Any questions, as always, please leave them in the comments. And I've just realised I haven't shaved for, ooh, I don't know, I think it's a 48 o'clock shadow. Never mind. So, see you soon. Thanks again.